Welcome to the Crimson Stitchery on the Road. In this special episode, I take you on a trip to the Royal Botanic Gardens at Kew. In February 2019, I was invited to visit the Economic Botany Collection at the Research Department at Kew Gardens. This historical collection of plant-based artefacts is kept for study and teaching purposes. I enjoyed seeing a range of plant-based textiles collected from all around the world. It was a lovely day at Kew Gardens and I really enjoyed the landscape and the orchid exhibition afterwards. I hope you enjoy this special episode of the Crimson Stitchery. Joseph, um, that might be wrong. This is the Banks building. Um, oh, Joseph Banks, the, the explorer. Yeah. Are you okay with your voice being in the video? Yes, that's fine. Just not your face. Just not mine. We have so a I've... disembodied voice. <laughs> of cute. Got and that's it. where we're going. So this is where the economic botany collection is stored. Cool. So this is the other side of what we just saw. And is this a greenhouse? Um, well, part of it is a greenhouse. So when it was designed and it had um, economic botany plants, so useful plants on the roof as well. Oh, on the roof! Yeah. Cool. You can't use the roof? You can't go out into it. Ah, okay. But the architecture is incredible. Yeah. When was it built, do you know? I think it's 87. Oh really? So it's the original roof or the whole? Yeah, I think so. Wow. That's amazing. I might have to check that. Otherwise Mark will be like... We'll do some fact checking. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do some fact checking. Okay. Love the architecture. The economic this botany, would you say? Room, yeah. A curation room. But these are just cute postcards. Are they? It's like, well, I mean, Harriet Pole punched a bunch of to make bunting. Oh. Beautiful bunting. You're so creative. I'm in the economic botany collection store um, in the research department at Kew Gardens, which is really exciting. And we're having a look at different examples of plant fibres and different plant-based materials that are used in textiles. So is that the archives in the past? So yeah, this is the old, that's the old museum. This is when the store and the collection of wood came in. What's this one? And that's the old museum again, but in colour. And where was that? Was that at Kew? Yeah. I see. So originally there were three museum sites at Kew. Hmm. And then that's the acquisitions where things are being frozen for pests. I love all of these original <laughs> posters. <laughs> so this is Kim, and um, Kim is a PhD researcher at Kew and Royal Holloway, right? Yes. And also runs a really interesting company. Yes. <laughs> called Handmade Apothecary. Okay. So I study medicinal plants, but today we're going to be looking at plants and materials. Yes. And here is the archive at Kew. And there's all sorts of interesting things in all of these drawers. And it's huge. And there's more. Better. Economic meant slightly different thing, which economic... We think of economics now as being to do with financing and banking and yeah. stuff. Um, but it's more related to things that are being useful. So if you think about domestic economy, which is like mm. home economics and um, that kind of use of the word. But of course, yeah. it was also a way for people to explore how to... Um, Made money from bring, plants. Bring industry using plants. Mm -hmm. Pre-plastics, of course, because before plastics, plants yeah. were everything. And uh, looking down the bowel of history, having to figure out how we're going to be dealing with things when we have it, such an issue with plastics at the moment, then perhaps people should be looking back at plants. Oh, I love... Oh, oh wow. wow! That's like the lace bark. And that's a collar. So they've chopped out the shape of the lace bark and then embroidered it with milkweed. Threads. Milkweed threads. Oh, no, actually, I think it's in the shape of milkweed. I think the original thought it was. But it might just be the... How beautiful. But it should be around here. How do they... How do they process the bark in? So you can see the fibres down there and then the, the plant has been embroidered using... The leaf motif is using another plant. 
basically it's the inner bark of a tree that you beat out and somebody has moved it. Okay, so in here we've got lots of different samples of cotton, I can see. <laughs> so it's called illustrative series, where you have all the different stages in the manufacture of any kind of plant product, in this yeah. case cotton. So you've got somewhere we will have the cotton flowers as well. Ooh. And then you have the um, kind of partially processed cotton. So that, then, is that the original, the cotton kind of bowls? I think that would have been taken off from the bowls. So does it say what country those ones came from? It will do on the man, on the website. See for this one, okay. it's in U USA. Oh, and what date? New Orleans. This will be like late 1900s. Right, okay. So we know a lot about the social history of the people that had to pick that cotton. Mm -hmm. mm. And here it is in queue for study. And we've got things like pre-bleached, post-bleached, and it woven into threads. Yeah, so that's pre-bleached, so it's yeah. really grey, isn't it? Mm. It's got lots of the pieces of the fibre still in it. Ah, and then here we have... Yeah, more stages. Cleaned and bleached. Um, some kind of woolly-looking thickness of cotton and some really fine threads of cotton. And beautiful wooden spools here mm -hmm. as well. See, look, finished carded fibre. So now we know what finished carded fibre looks like. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Oh, it's very before, soft. <laughs> I guess that's before it becomes what do you spun. Call it? Spun. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, yeah, so it's been <coughs> carded, so it's been washed and brushed in the right direction and ready to put to the spinning wheel. And then some finished cloth as well, I guess. Okay. Domestic cloth. And does this have a date? It will do on the on the website, but again, most of the thing is like late 1900s. Okay, so it was Sorry, late 1800s. Late 1800s. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So this literally was slavery cotton. And now it's so it's been kept or early in, 1900s. So it's been kept in Kew Gardens archive since since that date. The economic botany yep. collection. Okay. So it's slightly different. Um, is it? kind of confusing history of it was all on display in um, museums yep and then in the recent sort of history those museums have shut down and it's all come back to school. okay okay so it was always for study and educational yeah, purposes exactly but right. it's a more victorian idea of you learn from museums yeah that makes sense and the way they displayed it with all of these processes as part of um the teaching element yeah okay Oh, and that, so that's the display cabinet, mm -hmm. and you can see there the really fluffy cotton plant. Mm -hmm. Does it say what museum it was in? That would have been the Economic Boston oh, Museum here. Georgia, US, America. Well, that would have been... Oh, right, okay. You're right, in this case, because we do have a lot of photographs like this of our museums. Right. But this does look like it's from the US National Museum in Washington. Okay. Oh, wow. I see. So I, I really like things like this because I think that in your collections, as you've got here, you see the stages of the materials processing and I think you really get the idea of the hands of the archivists and the museums. But also, I think it's really important to put things in their social context all the time, which is why I talk about who, who were the hands that picked these originally and who mm. were the hands that packed these and who were the eyes, you know, that saw them on display. So I guess... It's likely that this photo is a picture of these in 1888. When yeah. they originally were displayed yes. before. I guess in that museum got packed down because economic botany was incredibly popular and then it kind of fell out of fashion. So this is 1883 <laughs> actually, I must say. 1883. From Georgia. Yeah. US National Museum, Washington. So I guess... Okay. So they're kind of a mixture of where they came from, the different things yeah, you've got in the archives. absolutely all over the world, particularly, predominantly British colony. Mm -hmm. But we do have a lot of things from a lot of places. Okay. Yeah, so the kind of high date of the museum was when it opened from 1847 until about the 1930s, which of course coincides with the British Empire. Yeah. Which is why so much of the material. But okay, so here is the illustrative series that you were talking about when we were looking in the drawers just now. And here's a finished one. This would have been displayed in a museum in this manner in order to educate people about materials and production. Mm -hmm. Do we know who, who were the people that visited these museums to learn about the materials? 
So there was a wide range of people. It was aimed at educating the general public. So it wasn't okay. only exclusive for experts in botany or yeah. materials, but it was also to inspire industry. So it would have been a mixture of people who, uh, Victorian entrepreneurs and people who worked in materials or, or whatever, you know, it, the collection covers subjects including materials, fuels, medicines, foods. So anybody that was interested in, in coming as well as the general public. What I find really interesting about the 19th century is there was this huge value placed on textiles because that really, textile production is what sp spurred on the industrial revolution in, in Britain and across Europe and across the world. And as, as we just said, completely linked to empire mm -hmm. and colonial ventures across the world to find the places that grew these plants. Yeah, it's amazing to think of Britain being like the major producer of cotton. So, okay, so yeah. what's this? Um, so this is examples of dyed cotton um, from India. Yeah, from India. So it's really interesting as this is an original uh, museum label. Oh, it's a museum label. Mhm. Mm and it tells you more about, about the object. And that blue label there tells you that this object came to queue in 1880 with a big accession from the India Museum, which was linked to the East India Company. Okay. Um, which a huge amount of material came in. Price at place of production, price in London. That's really interesting because it's showing how the economies are varying. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And the sort of dress. usefulness of that material. Yeah. I think that's India. I can't the label. Oh, I think you'll like this one. Oh, no. okay. So this is cotton and it's got this applique, amazing cut-out applique in this sort of abstract foliage kind of shapes that yeah. are all hand, hand applied. I mean the patience to do that. <laughs> oh, wow. So this is presented by it's all Ms. Hand Morat, applied. late inspector of the girls' schools in Bengal. Oh, so it's got, some, it's got some it's ribbon and rick rack. Oh. My hair's clean. <laughs> ribbon, my hair's going on the object, which is not allowed. Um, ribbon and rickrack, and then it's got Thank these um, these motifs that have been hand cut, so they're not pre-woven ribbon or anything. They've all been hand cut and applied around the neckline. Stunning. It's really amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And then we also have, we're still, it's still a, a working collection, so we still accession modern things. And somebody recently gave us something that kind of represents a trend now which is you know wanting biodegradable plastic alternatives so we have yep. this Swedish kitchen culture cotton um, dishcloth okay pretty funky design as well yeah mm -hmm. definitely so returning back to natural materials again so that's biodegradable what's it made from cotton okay so uh, it's in the cotton oh, so it's an alternative to using a microfiber yeah so this is a cotton one not a plastic one right but it yeah, does look very similar yeah in terms of the construction you know, texture to, to the plastic ones yeah wonderful <laughs> old and new and then Ooh. we don't have a lot of silk because obviously silk is an animal made product but we did collect a bit because it was about the plants what that about the, the silkworms were eating so oh. shoes made of hemp and bark head. from Korea. What are these chrysanthemums here under glass? What, sorry? They're chrysanthemums. Yeah. Yeah. And they're made from rice paper. They're made from rice paper. And when do they date from? The mid 19th century, so around 1850. I recognise these from Chinese portraiture. Yeah. I've seen them painted and drawn, mm. but never in person. Aren't they just fabulous? They're so beautiful. So I read about them because there's a big collection of rice paper. Yeah. So um, but I'd imagine it would be sort of one in your house. flower, and then you see this oh, it's a whole bunch ornamental oh. display. Um, it's next to a display of beetles. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love archives? Yeah. Lovely baskets. Lovely thing. shapes. I was really struck seeing the cotton bowls picked in Georgia, USA and originally displayed at the US National Museum at Washington in the 1880s. When I think of American cotton fields, I think of summertime, when the living is easy and the cotton is high. I think of Georgia on my mind, classic songs from jazz history which vocalise difficult lives in the American South. 
Being confronted with an actual cotton plant from Georgia, whilst far away in an archive in London, was incredible. I thought about the anonymous pair of hands belonging to the person who picked it. It was most likely to have been a sharecropper and a former slave or their descendant. It's an important part of recent history that needs to be spoken about, yet it's too easy to overlook the human labour that goes into textile production still today. When we see finished cloth and garments, it's easy to forget what the raw material looked like when it was still a plant, and what it took to grow that plant and transform it into something we can wear. I'm glad to have educated myself further about plants and textiles, whilst locating them in their social context. So we had an amazing time looking through the archive and now we're having a quick stop to look at the orchids before home. Thanks for watching the Crimson Stitchery. I hope that you enjoyed this archive and uh, garden visit. Um, please hit subscribe if you haven't already. You can find me on Instagram also as a sour telling. That's a sour telling. Thank you and enjoy. I'll take oh, it out wow. of the plastic. Yeah. I'm not going to start knitting with it. You might. We'll leave you alone for one second. Wow. What's that, Pramila? These are poppy seeds. What are they used for? For opium. Ooh. You can just imagine how big that high would be. It's so big. It can't even fit in my palm. It can't. You need a lot of help. <laughs>